So this is a 29 year old gentleman who presents with a one week history of painful swelling of the finger and uh, from an uh, undergraduate point of view um, I want you guys just to learn to assess this uh, sort of case and then we'll talk about it at a postgraduate level as well. So from an undergraduate point of view remember it's history, examination, special investigations. The history is this patient works uh, with motor cars but he denies any penetrating injury. He developed spontaneous onset of pain and swelling of the right ring finger and um, for the last week or so he's been unable to make a fist, uh, nighttime throbbing and uh, he eventually resorted to making a little incision to try and let what he knew was the pus to come out. So that's on, um, on, on the history. There are no comorbidities, uh, that's important as well. Uh, specifically uh, his RVD status. Um, when, you, when you start feeling, the important thing once again is not to feel generically, you need to try and feel what you're feeling for. And what you're feeling for here is to try and work out where the tenderness is. What we're trying to ascertain is whether the infection is localized to there where you can see the bead of pus come out or whether it's actually gone deeper into the flexor sheath. So you want to feel proximally. Tell me, is this sore? No. Not sore, eh? Not sore there. So that's a very important sign. It's not that sore over here. It's sore on the back of the uh, thing, but if I push on this side, it's not that sore, eh? It's not sore. Okay, on the back it's sore. Um, so that's what you're feeling for. And then the other thing you're feeling for is to try and feel fluctuance, but you won't feel it. It's going to be too tender and it's not that full of pus. Um, and you want to maybe test the temperature, but it's very difficult. Really what you're trying to work out is where it's sore. And then when it comes to move, you, you want to get the patient to move, make a, uh, a fist. So it's very limited flexion, as you can see. O open extend, the fingers held in flexion. So what we're starting to see are the signs of Canavel, which are the signs of a flexor sheath infection or not. So the signs of Canavel are uh, swelling along the whole course of the finger as opposed to just an area. The finger is held in a slightly flexed position. Um, he's tender along the whole course of the flexor sheath, which in this particular case, he isn't that tender proximally where you'd expect it to be. And there's no tenderness proximally here where the bursa might extend to. But he does have one positive sign, and that is when you passively extend the finger, he really doesn't like it. So that's a bit of a worry uh, for a flexor sheath infection. If we turn him over, you see that there's generalized swelling, which you normally wouldn't see this with a flexor sheath infection. You saw there. And it looks like some firm uh, um, induration going down into the web space. And you get the feeling these fingers are starting to push apart here, implying that there might be a tracking down to the, um, uh, the web space. So from a, that's from an undergraduate point of view. This is a bare minimum. It's a bad hand infection subcutaneous in the uh, pulp area maybe going down to the flexor sheath and it needs to be referred for uh, incision and drainage there's no place for antibiotics in this case i think it's the most critical thing you have to understand you cannot treat this with antibiotics it needs drainage from a postgrad point of view the only thing you have to decide now is whether it needs to be opened down to the flexor sheath or not if you open the flexor sheath inadvertently in the face of pus you risk introducing pus into the flexor sheath but if you don't open it and there is pus in there then you uh, have a neglected flexor sheath infection my gut feeling for this patient is no flexor sheath infection um, because I just don't think this sign is positive enough and I don't think this, that he should be way more tender over there. So I would just open this up as a normal incision and drainage and have a look at the flexor sheath. If, it, if it's showing signs of bulging, then I would have a low threshold for opening up proximally and distally and washing it out, flushing it out. But otherwise, tr try and avoid opening the flexor sheath. Obviously, pus swabs and then... Uh, um, empirical uh, antibody coverage.